this is a, a tutorial on how to model a uh, camera lens, a Cinema 4D. And uh, I'm quite annoyed because I just recorded this whole tutorial and realised my microphone was on the wrong setting, so it didn't record audio. But as you can see, this is what I came out with. And with this remake, retake, I'm hoping to do something better. But essentially, we're going to be modelling something like the camera lens that I recently did on this. Let's just, let's just get rid of all that. On the Olympus OM-10. Uh, there is, there is a video, and I will, I will show that. Well, I'll show, I'll show you a little, like, little clip. Of it. I didn't know last thing didn't work. Um, yeah, I I did a free model download on the Cinema 4D Touch Jam. Actually, I'll just show you a quick. Here's a render of it. Uh, as you can see, it's got the lens. The nice lighting using the seamless background with Expresso. Check out that tutorial. Oh, I'm joking. You don't. You don't have to. But you know, don't hesitate. Um. Okay. So let's start. Oh yeah. Let's start something new in Cinema 40, not Finder. Um. So okay. If you don't know, uh, to make cam uh the camera lens thing, you need to use a lathe nubs and the lathe nubs are. Well, I'll I'll grab one now. A lathe nubs is part of the nubs system family I don't, I don't know what's referred to as but what lathe nub actually does is act as a lathe kind of thing as you can see with the circle it will make sphere that was an awful example but i'll show you i'll get i'll grab an arc spline quickly what it'll do it will um take your spline and you know spherify i said circlify and that isn't actually a word but it kind of makes sense phonetically and logically to me Take that as you will. Um, yeah, it will take the spline and wrap it around 360 degrees, essentially. So what we're going to start do, we're going to start to do, we're going to go into our top view, and we're going to grab our linear spline. And when we're doing this, we're gonna, only going to be drawing half the lens because it will wrap it 360 degrees. So we want to do it around the z-axis. So we have our linear spline. And when we're doing this, I'm not going to be focusing on the back of the lens because if you're doing the lens, you're probably making a camera body for it. And when you're doing that, you, you don't see the back. But obviously, you can add that if you like, and you oh you can just add more points, and you'll see. Anyway, so let's get started. So we want to place our first point just about on the center. And just to note, when you're doing this, it doesn't matter if you get it wrong because you can just go back and edit the points. So we have a rough about center point, and then we want to branch out. And then when you do the lens, uh, you want to have a little ridge, I think. And then also when you're doing this, you want, it's always good to have a reference object or picture. So if you actually have a camera, work from that. If not, just fill up with whatever you got. So as you can see, I'm just adding ridges, and I'm not doing this accurately at all, or to anything. I'm kind of just going to make it up as I go along, which isn't necessarily the best way, but it seems to work. So here, I think I'm going to do the zoom ring, because that's generally quite, that's quite soon on. Um, so there's a zoom ring. And when you're making your uh, ridges or rims, you want to uh, have as many diagonal uh, points as you want as you can get because they will a reflect light better and b it'll just kind of make your thing look way more professional so now what we're going to do we're going to branch out a bit branch up and uh, now we're going to have the aperture adjustment f-stop ring thing which we'll add text to as i know because i just did this whole thing so there you go that that'll be that'll be the ring there now, uh, you want to, you can just add a few more if you like, then you, and then you want to start going in, because when you've done the outside, it will loop that, but then you also want to focus on the center part and the lens. So now we've done that, we want to add a ridge uh, point there, so it actually gives it some body, uh, and then we, once we have that little piece on the edge, we want to start going down in, so some something in this kind of way. 
for something a bit like this. You want to you can use a little step kind of angular bits if you like. And then once you can do a big bit which can hold text, which most of them do, which I did on my last or my OM10. Uh, just to say, when I was working for the OM10, for the OM10, I was actually working from a physical reference because I actually have that camera, so it did help. But you can work from images. So what I'm just doing here is doing little ridges, little steps, which add more, more realistic look, if you like. I don't, I don't, I don't like saying it adds something because it just makes it better. And that seems to, you know, be obvious. Um, so when you get to a certain point, uh, that's probably just going to be what we're going to do for now because we'll add the physical glass lens later. So once we've done around about this much uh, on ridging and... As you can see, it's not accurate ridging, but that's because I'm doing this for tutorial purposes. And you feel like feel free to go back and change it with the live selection and point mode. So once you've done as many as you want, depending on the size of your actual lens, you want to drop a point around about there and then match up to the, the 90 degree angle, and then go in and finish off there. Actually, yeah, just stop there. Once you've done that, you want to add your spline to your lathe nerves and then because we've done this on the z-axis it's going to look a bit crazy so what we're going to do is uh, rotate up our spline 90 degrees 90 is that and oh there you go this one's more of a wide angle lens the last one was a bit different but you know it can be different every time because I'm not actually working from a particular image uh, Hey, there we go. And um, what I also want to do is just rotate the lathe nerves in this direction because it gives a better view. So when you first do this, you'll notice there is some fong issues. Or if you don't know what these weird um, shading bits are, and it's oh, okay. The the shading issues here are to do with a fong tag and a fong tag is essentially an easier way of uh, adding a more smooth look to harsh edges with uh, not that many polygons so cutting down on render time and other things and it's like an alternative to hypernerves but in some cases when the angle is too high it can just uh, blend the whole thing together so generally the magic number for these kind of things is 22 so if you just type in 22 you'll notice you have definition on the ridges but it doesn't like as you see when I just take it down to zero it doesn't add horrible ridges in that direction in the off in the adjacent direction and also when you do this I advise you just take up the uh, subdivisions because depending on your size of your lens it may not be correct See, I think I may have done too many ridges on the outside, but that really doesn't matter because you can just go back and change it or do it differently to however you are, you're actually going to do it. Um, there seems to be some more fong issues here. That would be because... Why would that be because? There are some point issues here. So as I said, you can just go back and change them. That fixes it. There you go, no more fong issues. So that that's just showing you how just going back and changing it can fix the whole thing. Just editing points. Right now we are well first of all I can say that this is way quicker than the other one. That one went on for twenty five minutes. This one will not. I am to keep this pretty short. So now we have the physical part of the lens. We wanna the physical body of the lens. We wanna add the actual uh uh, convex, I think it's convex or concave, no, it's convex, uh, piece of glass. Well, by doing that, you want to, uh, to do that, you want to grab a sphere, uh, move it along the z-axis roughly where you want it to be, then we're going to change the type to hemisphere, so we only have half, so we don't have unwanted polygons, then we want to rotate it 90 degrees, using shift to snap to to quantize, quantize the <laughs> quantize the rotational values 
two integers of five. So then what I've just done now is I've changed the radius and then you'll see it's far too spherical. I mean, for some lenses like fisheye lenses, this actually may be correct, but not for this. So what we want to do, we're going to coordinate or coord coordination. No, no, the this this one, and then we want to go into the y yeah the y scale, and change that to how much however much you want to change it to, to give it the curve smooth. Uh, smooth curve but not too much and then I'm just changing the radius so it doesn't it's not too small we can also up the segments because uh, it's not quite enough and let's have a look at that that's that's decent as you can see already it's starting to take its shape now as you'll notice in the preview in my actual uh, lens I added text I'm, I'm just gonna show you how to do it here and we're just gonna copy this 50 mil even though this is not gonna be 50 mil but you know you get the idea oh that's another one <laughs> here okay so to add a text that aligns with the lens you don't want to use like a, a bend deformer which some people would use and that no you don't do that that will just get out of place what you want to do is go into your deformers drop down and go along to spline wrap now you may not have used spline wrap before, I never used it before doing this, but um, it's it's really useful for lathe maps, as you will see. So we want to get spline wrap, we want to get Motext, and a circle spline from the spline drop down. And then we want to go into spline wrap, uh, add the circle to the spline link. These are called links, by the way, you use them when you make your user data for some things. Sorry, that was random. Um, and we just want to quickly change the Motex uh, to whatever we're going to write. I don't know why I did a shift on 5, 50 mil. As you can see, Motex is still there. Nothing's happened. It's because we need to make the spline wrap a child of the Motex. Now, you'll see uh, this is not quite right. But what we first want to do is align the circle spline with the radius of the point that we want to add it onto the lens so you can just purely do that by eye and what we're going to want to put it just here so if we move the circle spline to where we want it it's roughly there increase the radius so it protrudes anyway so <laughs> wow I cannot speak uh, so you can see it slightly then what we're going to do to fix this text issue is first go on our Motex and use the scale tool here or press T as a shortcut and then just uh, drag from anywhere in this kind of direction to get what seems to control the height in this because the spline wrap is controlling how much the text is being wrapped around the sphere, the circle. So to fix this you want to change the percentage in the two part here and what you see that does is this reduces the amount of the spline being used to place the text on and as you reduce it it will move so you want to <coughs> excuse me watch where that's going and now this is roughly in proportion we'll make it a bit smaller so and make the motex smaller so it all fits like so and now you'll see um, well, it's it's the wrong way, isn't it? So, to fix this, you want to go into the Motex itself, and you don't want to do that. I was joking. Um, it's one of these. Uh, you want to go into the spline wrap. There we go. Go into the spline wrap, which is in the Motex. I was partly correct. Go into spline wrap and change. Uh, the rotation on the Y to 180 degrees, so it's facing the right way, and yeah, that's a that's now facing the right way, so it's orientated correctly. We can also change the radius so it fits. I mean, we could have changed the depth of the Motex, but at the end of the day, it does the same thing. So there it is, and also if we want to move it, we can go into spline wrap, 
change the offset. The offset is the offset of where it is round the uh, circle or the spline being used. Um, let's hide that circle. Uh, okay, there we go. So we're going on. We're coming on. It's going on. Coming on nicely. As you can see, it is untextured. So, actually, wait. Even though this isn't actually the right shape or anything for a zoom lens, we can change this to a focus ring. Um, we're gonna have this big ring is gonna have some texturing or some jimping, as it is called. So what we want to get, we want to get cloner. We want to get a ball. Uh, if you want to learn how to use the ball, watch my tutorial. If you also want to learn how to get your own buttons and your places, watch my other tutorial. Those are quite basic. And we want to get ourselves a cube. Then we want to add the cube to the cloner, change the mode of the cloner to radial. And because we have it, the lens across the Z or along the Z, um, the orientation is correct. So we want to quickly reduce the amount, the size, rather not the amount, the size of the cubes because they'll be too big. We'll just increase the radius of the cloner. We, like, I'm essentially just adjusting things as I go because it's easy that way. So we've changed the cube to make them small because we want like little thin in incisions or in <laughs> incisions. Sounds rather medical, but you know it's the same thing. And then we want to change the length across the Z because that we want it to cover the whole. Uh, the width of the um, focus ring or zoom ring or anything in this case. Uh, so quickly add the cloner and the lathe nerves to the ball and because it's A minus B we want that there. And then now what we need to do is move the cloner to where it is and then A adjust the radius so you can see when you have it there, it'll actually make a cut. And then secondly, you want to uh, up the count. Something like this might work. 100 seems to be its limit. Uh, it's also a bit too far in. So yeah, again, we can do that by just up in radius. You can see it's still making a solid incision, a cut. I don't know what I describe it as in my tutorial. Um, there you go. So this is the completely untextured lens, unmaterialized. I don't know. Very bad on my terminology. Um, I think I just need to fix this. This is a bit too. Uh, hot, like there we go. There's too much going on at the edges. So for this, we want only only three materials because it's quite basic. This is a. Uh, generally just for an SLR lens by the way because with DSLR ones they generally have switches and other things I mean you can add all the little details you need I'm just focusing on the basic techniques like spline wraps because that is used for quite a lot of it and then you can add buttons on it using spline wraps and other bits but this is just basic or a basic form of this so the first material we want to make is just for the main body or the lathe nerves so body we want to change the color to a uh, off black. As the last one, I made it too black at first, and it didn't look too good. So you don't want it too black. We want to have a minor reflection and up the blurriness, just to however much you want. Got a solid five, and now you can see the specular. Well, if I uncheck the specular, yeah, the specular is what is adding this white dot, as it would seem, and you don't want that much just on a dark material like this so you want to just decrease decrease reduce the values of most of these all of these um all of these uh, levels by by as much as you feel you need to like whatever however much specular you want but i'm just saying you want to you do want to reduce the amount of specular going on so I'm just playing around with them. This isn't, there's no set way of doing this. I'm just I'm just going for it, you know. So that's our body. Now we want to add our our color for our text. And for this, we're just going to have a red. So let's 
call it red, and then we'll go to red, have a slightly off red, never go for the full corner is my top tip, because it doesn't look too great. So there we go, just a bit of an off red. I had a mind a bit of reflection, not that it's too important in this case. That's fine. Now we want to go for the lens. And the lens, as you should know, is made out of glass. So we want to go to transparency and change the refraction to not what people normally do is 1.3 which, which will look like that or 1.4 which is what people sometimes do you want to go for 1.2 because this as you can see even with just with this preview makes the 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 refraction I guess uh, smoother and therefore the light shining through will be smoother and it will just it'll look way better uh, then we want to go into reflection up that a bit right, I'm not quite sure uh, how much, I mean you can change it obviously accordingly just put some blurriness on it and you don't need any Fresnel even though everyone seems to have Fresnel just because Grace Gargarilla once suggested it anyway, that's aside from the point then on Specular, what we want to aim for is to get like two little dots so it, we can emulate there being a light in the scene when we don't even need it and it just, it just looks better so for that we want to up the inner width and then you can reduce the fall off, but not not greatly, but a bit. Reduce the fall off. Just mess around with these values, just so you just get something kind of like that. Like you can just up the inner width a bit. Well, that may be too much, but you get the idea. Um, also, you can change the color, which will. You don't really want to go into actual colors, but you know, it'll alter the lightness and darkness of your. Um of your glass so let's call that lens I guess you can call it glass but uh, we'll add that to the actual uh, to the sphere we'll add the red to the motex and we'll add the black to the body or the bull in this case so there you go, there is your lens uh, so this one looks quite different to the last one I did um, as you can see on the actual one I added text here and all other places but that as I said it's just using a spline wrap so just to show you what this looks like quickly I'm just gonna add ambient occlusion I don't want this to go on too long, ambient occlusion and give you a quick little preview now what you see changing the specular of the glass did is add these and when you actually have real lights it will look far better believe me but uh there you go, you get a basic idea for the overall look, get another shot with the writing in, and the jimping. But adding those uh, diagonal ridges will give you the, a better sense of catching light and, and other whatnot, and other such stuff. And also you might want to decrease the transparency just for the uh, glass. But you know, it's completely your choice. So yeah, when you do that, it's just a bit less but you know don't decrease it that much but you want a bit of solidity solidity oh, really bad at words um, yeah, there we go here's your basic SLR lens and yeah use these techniques that I've showed you for other things because they're useful I'll show you the other one I did as well previously it's just no not that one. oh no I deleted it didn't I poops there you go, it's this. This is the other one I did, just so you get an idea how, how it can change every time. This was more of a, it's had a different structure, but and as you can see when I said I made the inner lens too small. But this one was more of a zoom kind of thing. But it was exact same technique, just different splines. I'll show you this. Um, so yeah, follow, uh, follow this and uh, make your own lenses. Add it to your camera bodies that you may be making, or just maybe just make a lens for the head of it, or just use these techniques for something else. Or well, maybe you're just watching just for my, for just for the lol, the lols, just for the just for fun, you know. Anyway, um, and my name's David, uh, or the Polar Monkey, and uh, you've been watching tutorial number seven. Um, yeah, go watch the uh, or download the free OM10 because. Might as well, it's free, you know. Show some love, you know. Like, if you like it. You know, I don't, uh, I don't care. Well, I do care. But anyway, I'm rambling. Wow, this is still long. Terribly sorry. Uh,